Okay. Hi, everybody. Chris here. Liv. <laughs> Liv. You remember Liv, right? Yeah. Hi, everybody. She is the star of the Planetoids video series. Um, oh, I don't know about that. She saved our butts. Uh, you got that ship going in two dimensions. Yeah. Sure did. I That's was... crazy. Now I have a haircut. That's what... That's what coding does to you, you know. <laughs> we're all we're all a little tired here. It's it's the end of the semester, and so what better time to record a new video on new fun stuff for the STEM coding channel? Behind me is one of my favorite visualizations. Yeah, it's crazy. There's dots, man. What's going on here? Okay, so here's here's the thing. So what you have to do is you have to draw a pipe. So so my laptop happens to be a touchscreen laptop. So. I highly recommend using a touchscreen. You can use a mouse too, that's fine. Uh, it's a little harder, but the best thing is, is to literally just sort of take your finger and kind of connect all the dots like you're in second grade again, you know. So there you go, looking good. And this is going to demonstrate fluid flow. I'm sorry, I'm casting a shadow on the, the board here. Well, but I would definitely pass second grade. If that's what it takes, drawing dots. That was amazing, Lives. All right, so here you go. And the next thing you do is you got to press the space bar here, and that's when the fun begins. There we go. So there's some, there's some objects that are flowing through. And right now, there's not a whole lot of stuff inside of this pipe. And so what you can do is that you can just sort of press the screen. So you can click the screen or press it, use the touch screen. And that will add more objects to it. And you want, what you want to do is you want to fill up uh, this pipe with uh, these objects. Okay? Now, if you look closely, you'll see that maybe the average velocity here is maybe 4.6, 4.5, but the average velocity in the middle is more like 6 or 6.1. And if you just look at it, let's just look at it for a second. Okay? So, is, is it believable? So, Liv, you gotta, you gotta tell me if this is believable, Liv, whether, does it look like the things in the middle are moving faster than the outside, or is that just...? Um, yeah, I would say they look like they're moving faster, for sure. I mean, at least a little bit faster. I mean, it's like 4 versus 6 or something like that. But uh, it's, it actually is moving faster. And so this, this whole thing is, my, is what I think of when my kids go in the backyard and they get the garden hose and they start spraying each other with it, you know. And, and what's the trick to get the garden hose to spray across the, the backyard? Uh, I, I would typically put my thumb on the hose on the, and then go like that. Yes, exactly. Get now, wide why, coverage. Right, and the reason that works is because you're constricting the flow. So you have all this water that wants to go through that garden hose uh, and that nice big garden hose, but when you put your stick your thumb into it, there's only a small little space that that water can squeeze around. That's what we're doing here. There's only a certain amount of space for that water to get through, uh, whereas, you know, the rest of it is, is quite large. And so the water ends up getting moving faster here than it is here because it's all squeezed. And there's all this water that's sort of piling up and pushing this stuff forward so that this stuff ends up going faster. So you want to see a cool trick with the code? Yeah, let's do it. What's okay. it? What's it? So if you press the H button, that hides the little velocity vector. So it allows you to see it a little bit better. Maybe now, I don't know, is it more convincing now that it's going faster? Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know if there's much of a difference in my perception of it. Um, I can like follow along with it. I can sort of like walk along. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. That yeah. really convinced me. It is Did definitely it? going faster in the right. pipe. What else? What good is having your own YouTube channel if you can't do something <laughs> stupid like that on there? All right. You want to see the other cool thing that I made? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. it? All right. So uh, hit the back button there. Um, and for you guys watching the, the code uh, online, pro both of these links are going to be below the screen here. So you want to click on, uh, so Liv, you want to click on Realistic Physics with Box2D. These, both these examples use the Box2D library, uh, which is the same library that Angry Birds uses. Um, oh, hey. Sorry, the zip, the zip sound. Angry Birds. There you go. <laughs> that was hilarious. We didn't plan that. So Angry Birds uses an open source library called Box2D, which was developed by Aaron Caddo, who developed it. He released it on the internet. 
And then he got a sweet job with Blizzard, and he works on Overwatch. Oh, that sounds awesome. So, Aaron Cato, if you're out here, we thank you for your service to the world with the Box 2D library. I love it. Now, here's the thing. So, this is different than the other one because gravity is turned on. So, what you want to do is you want to draw like a bowl. So, make, give me a big U, and it's, the touch screen still works, so it should work fine. There we go. So now the next thing is, is you want to draw, the next thing you want to tap space, kind of like you did last time. And then again with either the touch screen or the mouse, you want to click, you just want to click and that'll add objects to there and just fill the whole thing with, with objects. Pretty cool, huh? Why don't you hit uh, the H button to hide the arrows there? So this is what a fluid is. A fluid is just a whole bunch of these objects that are all kind of mushed up together. Like this, I mean, this is, looks pretty similar to water if you ask me. Like if you're pouring water into a bowl or something like that, I think it would look a lot like this. And that's all that water is. It's these water molecules that are all smushed up together uh, and to the point where they can't really smush any more that, than they can because there's so little space between the two. And that fact defines a lot of the properties of water. And so that's why we call it incompressible fluid flow is because you can't compress it any more than it already is because they're already all smushed together like that. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. That is pretty cool. In real time, 60 frames per second. Thank you, Aaron Cato. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of objects it's kind of dropping in frames, but I guess, you know, you can't test the limits of everything without some frame rate dropping. But... Right, now another fun thing you can do is you can hit U and you can unhide the arrows. And notice what happens when you add one of these, one of these objects as they fall down. Do you see that? Oh, the, the arrow is getting larger. That's right, the arrow gets larger as it goes because it's accelerating. It's going faster and faster and that velocity vector gets longer and longer the faster it goes. Oh, wow. So just like on the other activities on the STEM coding channel, that's, that's what it does. Now the code behind this is a little complicated. Um, but it is based on p5.js, so you know it's we did base it off of that, and we're probably going to make more activities that kind of use this library in the future. So you guys can look forward to that, uh, and but but enjoy play around with this thing. The fun thing is you can just you can reset it, and you can draw you know whatever you want, and fill it with particles, and see what happens. So just have fun with it, and uh, we hope you enjoy these these code these activities. Thanks. Liv's having fun over there. Yeah, wee! <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Woo!